So these were in pretty bad shape. Um, I did a resole, changed the footbed. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean the uppers and, and dye them a little bit. Now I wasn't going to show you the process of, of restoring everything. I just wanted to kind of maybe give you an idea of, of re-dyeing the uppers, trying to bring them back to close to what they were. Not 100% because I mean, there's no, it's hard to tell what they look like before. It was in pretty bad shape. And now this has been cleaned a little bit. It's still, it's still in rough shape, as you can see. So now I'm using acetone just to kind of prep that surface a little bit. Uh, this is a piece of crepe, like a crepe rubber. We call it a plantation crepe. We, you know, when we resole shoes, we keep smaller pieces and camera malfunction. We keep smaller pieces to um, to use trying to remove glue from the uppers or any other projects that we got going on. Because sometimes when you're gluing the soles, you know it's going to get on it's going to get on the uppers. Try to keep it away from the uppers. That's the key. But sometimes it does. We use this right here to basically just remove the glue from from the surface. So we're going to let that dry for a bit. Then we're going to come back and put a um, Phoebings, let's see, mahogany. Okay, Phoebings mahogany on there. That'll give it a base coat. We'll let that sit. We'll see how it looks like. Maybe we'll add different colors, like a darker tone around the toe area to give it um, that burnished look. We'll see. I mean, the customer said, "Do whatever you, whatever you think that would work." I said, "Okay, we'll make it look presentable." Never say it's going to look new, because it's impossible to make it look new. I want it to look new. You got that nice patina going with that antique finish. And there she goes. This one doesn't have any glue on the surface. I was careful when I was gluing this one. Or does it? Nah, it doesn't. All right, let's continue. <laughs> Got the big guns out. I mean, I'm going out tonight. I don't want to get my hands dirty. Well, I mean, they're dirty now, but I'll clean those up. I don't want to get any dye on them because that sucker stays on there. It doesn't go away. I mean, I do have a social life, you know. Sometimes, anyway. All right, here goes nothing. Oh, my God, I just spilled some on there. No, I didn't. <laughs> I got you, some of you. <laughs> hmm, this looks pretty dark. Oh, it'll be all right. It gets lighter as it goes on, as it dries. So don't be, you know, if you're doing a project, don't freak out. It's normal because the leather is getting wet. It's going to look darker, but when it dries, it'll it'll look a little. It'll look different. It looks so different, we might have to put another coat on. So we'll see what happens. Now I'm sure there's a there's a proper way of putting dye on the shoes. Am I a patina artist? No. So I'm just kind of like, you know, brushing it on there. I like to do you know the bottoms aren't done yet as you can see right it just I just resold it and, and stitched it um, normally I sand my bottoms sand my bottoms that sounds fun that sounds funny I sand the bottom of the soles and um, put a nice finish on it sometimes a neutral color or neutral finish or just some dye color 
really depends on what I'm in the mood for, you know. So I don't want to get, I don't want to finish the bottom and then, um, and then work on the uppers and dirty the bottom again. Yes, I know their shoes, they're going to get worn and they're going to get dirty and they're going to get scuffed, but you know what, that's not the point. The point is I'm going to try to keep it clean before I give it to the customer and the customer can wear it and jump in the puddles. I don't care what they do with their stuff. As long as I do what I can do to do the best that I can and be happy and comfortable with the repair, restoration, whatever you want to call it, and then I'm okay. So getting back to my point, I'll wait till um, I'll wait to finish the to finish the uppers and then I'll go ahead and do the bottom, attach the heel. And then the condition the uppers again for the last time and then she's done so people often wonder why I do why I do you know cleaning up shining the uppers before I do the bottom of the soles that's the reason I usually don't like to get the bottom dirty when I'm cleaning and polishing and dyeing and all that so so we'll let that dry as you can see it's getting a lot lighter already okay from the back that's where we started put another little bit of coat on there Cool. We'll let this dry and maybe we'll do a little darker at the toe area to give it some patina. Let me look at the difference. You see how this is almost like a tannish shade? It didn't look like that before. It was a lot darker. Now this has a little bit more red mixture into it. So we'll kind of lighten that up a little bit. Maybe around the area here. We'll, we'll figure something out once it dries. But at this point, at the stage of the shoe, the way they were, I mean, it was it was pretty bad. There was wax buildup, polish buildup. You couldn't even tell what color it was to begin with. But it is, it looks like it was in the tan color family. And we're going to convert it a little bit, adding a little bit of reddish hue to it. But I think it'll look good once it gets done. I'm going to do the same thing to this shoe. Always, always when you're, when you're obviously, it, it's a pair of shoes, you know. Sometimes I, I do, I make a mistake of uh, working on one shoe and then coming back like a day or two or a week later and continuing with the other one. Then you don't have the consistency of, of them looking the same. It's always going to look different if there's a time period between jobs. So again I do it myself sometimes but you shouldn't um, you should basically whenever you're dying you're polishing you're customizing anything that you're doing to a pair of shoes do them at the same time that way you're in the same mindset of uh, on, on both of them you know when you when you start because when you come back it, it, there's always going to be something different you know and you don't want one to look different than the other obviously Unless you plan on doing that, but I, which, I, which I doubt you're doing. Cool. I like this mahogany color. It's kind of it's kind of cool looking. It's got a lot of browns in it, but but under different shades, you can see that you can see that red hue. Sometimes we'll airbrush on there, but I think at this at this stage in this in this project, um, having a, a liquid base coat was kind of better than airbrushing it on. Now I can come back and do the tinting with an airbrush just to darken it up a bit, but I think my airbrush is kind of dirty and I don't feel like cleaning it up right now. So maybe we'll just skip that airbrush thing. You can if you want. I mean, you know, a lot of guys who use that. Oh, just dropped on the counter. Oh, sorry. There's no hammer time in this video. I should put it like a cautionary thing, you know, like in the beginning. No hammer time so people don't watch it. 
couple of the broguing areas holes is still kind of light underneath we're gonna dab it on there just so we can get it inside cool all right we'll let this dry all right let's continue okay so shoe is dry by now I'm just gonna give it a quick buff working <laughs> oh lord my airbrush just gonna spray a little around the toe a little around the broken area oof oof -a. Now this isn't too dark, right? It's just a slight, not too much. While we're there, we'll take a little spray. It's not finished yet, okay? It's just like in the early stages of it. So we're going to let this sit. We're going to let it dry. We're going to come back, put some conditioners on it. Some creams, buff them, wax them. Put the heels on, we'll be done with them. Alright, let's continue. <clears throat> Alright, so it's not too bad. I'm going to apply a little bit of the, this is a big four conditioner. We'll let that sit for a minute or two. She's getting there. Let that dry. I'm gonna come back, put a little cream on it. Then um, we're pretty much a little bit of wax. I'm pretty much done with the uppers. All right, let's continue. All right, welcome back. So we're done with another project. Now, this project was not a full restoration video. Um, I was working on the shoes and then, and I happened to look at it, I'm like, you know what? That'll be kind of cool to show like a before and after. So that's where I started the video after I resold everything. And um, basically I was cleaning up the uppers and um, I said, you know what? That might be, that might not be a bad idea to, uh, to clean those up and show what they look like when they get done. So. Remember how light it was, right? It was like in a tan family. 
So this is almost like a mahogany. I think they turn out pretty good. They're presentable. They're not brand new looking at all. They're presentable. Now this was a $240 job, okay? Now, basically this is a Blake stitched shoe. A Blake stitched shoe, let me get through this ticket so you guys will see who it belongs to. A shoe and a sole is glued together and it is stitched from the inside out. It's called a Blake stitched shoe. Now, along with that, you're going to have a thin piece of leather. You see that piece right there? This is called a glue on welt. This is a sample of a glue on welt. Okay, basically it gets glued on like that. And then a sole comes on the bottom. This shoe, the footbed got replaced, glue on welt all the way around. New soles, new heel block, new he top lifts, obviously. Clean, dyed, condition, polished them up. And they turn out pretty good. I think the customer will be happy. Again, I don't know what brand this is. There's no label inside. There's nothing. It looks like a Magnani, but I'm not 100% sure. Now it's structurally sound because the welt that the manufacturers used, along with the footbed, is paper. It's fiberboard. So along uh, the way of this flexing over time, it tends to break the break the welt, and you see nice cracks on the side like that. You can't fix that because that that material doesn't stretch. When the leather is worn and it's flexed, it doesn't break. It doesn't tear on the flexing points. So now he's got a structurally sound shoe, which is going to last him for many years to come. All he's got to do is just kind of maintain the uppers polish shine condition them up and they'll look much much better along you know the life of the shoe just got to maintain it that's all that's the tricky part okay all right thank you for joining me again um, i appreciate it many more projects coming up um, please subscribe if you haven't um, hit the like button gives it give it a thumbs up anything else comment share whatever okay we appreciate it all right, so if you have any questions, please email me at Beto's. What is my email? Beto's at yahoo.com. B-E-D. Well, it's on the screen. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. We'll see you again.